I really, really hope so. With that, let's keep going. We can actually get back into simming now since we know we don't really have to care about buyer hitting 500. We shall sim to February 1st. And see where we're at from there. So far, the record's holding pretty strong. 30, 15, and 4, second best team through 49 games. Ekman has 40 goals in 49 games, so he won't hit 50 and 50. But still, for a third round pick, he is something else, isn't he? Let's go ahead and look at this team here, too. So we look first at the goaltending. Winkler has a 917, Peters a 908. He has four wins and 15 appearances. That's pretty brutal. So I still don't know if Peters is the guy, but he'll he'll suffice for now until Stefan Bonnet is ready, who uh, is tearing up the AHL right now. Very good with that. This song again. Dude, it's just, I'm telling you, man, this playlist just reverses a, or just replays a shitload of songs. I'm going to find a different one. <laughs> it's a playlist where it's like, hey, it's an 11-hour playlist. We're not going to tell you that we replay the same songs every half an hour. <laughs> God damn it. Why do all the lo-fi, chilled-out playlists sound exactly the same? That's why we go with Synthwave, dog. <laughs> because even if it sounds the same, it sounds hype as hell. Except for that one. Yeah, except for this playlist, because it's a bit too like, oh, we're trying to be dark and spoopy. And it's like, I don't... I don't want... dark and spoopy. I want... Give me some, like, upbeat 80 synth, dog. That's what I'm asking for. Make me feel like I'm in a f fucking 80s action film. Anyway. So, yeah, goaltending right now will be fine. The defense. Uh, Ron Ebbett and Lewis Johnson doing very well. Zagrappin. Nice little 16 points there for the rookie. Louis is doing very well as well. And, again, McCutcheon and Applicator have not been affected whatsoever by that minus one. Bayer, of course, is crushing it. Carlton, crushing it. Niedermeyer, crushing it. Ekman, crushing it. Brady Boyce is not good enough as it stands to be our second line center. The problem is we don't have anybody that can necessarily fill in. I mean, maybe somebody from the AHL, but yeah, for the most part, we just have to deal with it. Oberg's crushing it right now too, though. Uh, the third line's done pretty well. Pretty well. Not amazing. Holy shit, I can go Uriel Legacy or Legacy. Okay, so turns out we can keep that plus five and go with Geisberger or Legacy on that uh, second pairing. We're going to go with Legacy there. Legacy, Legacy, whatever. Like, clearly that is the move because he's like the ultimate playmaker. And that way we keep that plus five on that, uh, on that third line. Soap drops the old gift and sub. You love to see it. Uh, the fourth line as well. Janik's done very well because of power play time. Talix and Mendez all doing pretty well. I have no complaints right now. This team's looking damn good. I do want to see where the AHL team is. They are 36, 10, and 4. Unsurprisingly, that team is also crushing it, guys. I think. I think, I think, I think. This might be history in the making. It is 2034. The Vegas Golden Knights have fired their head coach after we beat them three to nothing. We just got a coach fired, baby. And for once, we're not the one who fired him. <laughs> Let's see how good Boyce is. is. Toronto's coach is still there. Uh, this Boyce guy might not be that good. Piney, what's going on? Indeed, we are killing it right now. Uh, where is Boyce? He's not there. His name was Boyce, wasn't it? What, did some other team, like, auto-sign him within a day? Ain't that a bitch. Did I hear Pasternak's knocks uh, interview at the end of the game? I actually didn't. I could have sworn that said it was Boyce. It was Devereaux. It was Devereaux. Cool, it was Devereaux. Was it Devereaux? Am I just thinking it was Boyce because of the change that we made to our team? It must be Devereaux. Warrior, thank you for the gift as well. You know, this guy might work. Uh, I doubt he takes the uh, goalie coach job, but I'll try. By paying him a boatload of money. 
a rogue pineapple. Soon to be FIFA God. Soon to be FIFA God. Boyce is your player. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you get confused. Boy Devereaux. Maybe that's what I was thinking of as Boy Devereaux. <laughs> Shout out to Boy Devereaux, who hasn't gotten a shutout since 2008, or a shout out. Certainly never got a shout out. He wasn't a goalie. Freaking Red Wings legend, Boy Devereaux. Oh, Although good he was a big part for of you! The 0 2 winning team. McTree, 119. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Alright, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I need I need to sim the rest of this month, man. I'm I'm getting too excited, too optimistic, too hopeful. Uh, Devereaux did actually sign with us, which is great, and we are winning games hand over fist right now, guys. It's is is it happening? Is it happening? Uh, the Ducks fire their head coach. Holy shit! Let's see if Trudeau is worth signing. Ekman has really slowed down in terms of goal scoring. Trudeau's only a B. He's a veteran-based coach. Two Jack Adams. Horrible fit for this team. Horrible. We won't even bother. Terrible. I went to Manchester United in Korea. They didn't let me play a single game for the first two months, and they gave me a chance to score twice. I'm surprised you were playing the uh, player career, but fair enough. I will say, Piney, just outright, like, the normal career mode um, might be an even better way to learn it instead of just, like, one player. But I'm glad you've taken an interest. Fun fact, I uninstalled FIFA last night and then reinstalled it this morning uh, because I did play a handful of games with some friends after the stream. In which case, I scored 11 goals in five games or something like that. Uh, but we lost a game 6-5 to five where we had about 12 shots. The other team had six, and all six of their shots went in. Because EA Sports, it's in the game. I'm not salty about it to this day. 38-20-5. We are two points back of the Sharks and the Flames in an incredibly close playoff race right now. Ekman really losing that scoring touch we are in control of our destiny here if Peters and Winkler can keep up that save percentage we have a chance Bayer on 33 goals 27 assists Carlton doing great Niedermeyer doing great Ekman still killing it uh, Legacy Legasse I feel like hasn't been a perfect fit for that line I feel like they've slowed down a bit. We're going to put Oberg at center. And Geisberger, Vorabev, Boyce has worked out pretty well. Janik is crushing it right now. <sighs> We're looking good. <clears throat> 19 games to go this season. Are we about to make the playoffs for the very first time? We will sim halfway through the month and see where we stand. Uh, two losses to start. Wasn't ideal. Okay. 41, 24, and 5. We're now four points back of the Sharks with 12 games left. Ekman hits 50 goals again. We don't have to be the top seed. We just have to make it. And right now, it would be pretty tough for us to blow this. The biggest threat is Edmonton on 79 points. If we beat the Oilers here which we could not jump them to make it into the playoffs last year. If we beat the Oilers right now, I think we've made the playoffs for the very first time. Well, we had to keep it interesting, didn't we? A 2-1 loss. Ottawa fires their head coach because fuck paying people money, apparently. It was Lorenz, wasn't it? Yeah. 57% scheme fit. He's not going to be a good fit either. Hello, Herms. How are you? I gave you some free advertisement earlier. I hope you don't mind. Colorado is next. We're currently in a wild card spot. We win 9 to 4. Montreal. 3 to 2. Come on. Come 
on. Is this it, guys? Is this it? It's not official. Nine games left. Come on. Boston. We win. Right there. Are we making the playoffs for the first time? Come on. Another win. Come on. Make the playoffs. You can do it. Beat Tampa. Yeah! Oh my god, it happened. <laughs> Oh, we have finally made the playoffs. It took until 2034. But we have finally made the playoffs. Yes. I can't wait to get Winnipegged in the first round. It's going to be great. No disrespect, Jets fans, but we all know what happened. Oh, God. Oh, God. We finally made it. With a tear in my eye. This is the greatest day in Goon Squad history. At least this Goon Squad. The, I don't know. The other Goon Squad had some good moments. Whew. The Growlers were quicker to make it. That they were. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. We have six games left this season. We could still technically push the Sharks for a top spot. Calgary could jump us. We'll see what happens. We do beat Vancouver 6-5. We've won eight of our last ten. Oh, Achilles, it's the first time we've made the playoffs. We missed last year by one point. Buffalo's a good team. We lose three to nothing. Florida's a good team. We win two to one. Final three games of the season, Pittsburgh, Vegas, and Nashville. The San Jose Sharks have all but clinched the top uh, seed in the conference. We are guaranteed home ice against Calgary as long as we do our job and just win, baby, as Joe Byer hits 40 goals again for the first time in forever. <sighs> Come on. Pittsburgh, 4-3. Joe Byer leading the team. One more point, and we're guaranteed the second seed. There it is. We make the playoffs for the first time. We have home ice as well over Calgary. History has been made. A 51-win season for the Trinidad and Tobago Goonfish. Oh, you'll love to see it. 51, 26, and 5. We finally got the right coach. We finally, granted it was because of some changes I had to make, but we got some goaltending, and that minus one didn't matter. We have finally made the playoffs. It, it's been 84 years, but we finally made it. The fourth best team in the NHL, yet only the third best team in the uh, Western Conference, which is insanity. I mean, on point percentage, it's just crazy too. Goals for, we had the third best offense in the league. Goals against, we had a top six Defense and goaltending set up there. Toronto sucked. Power play, top four at 26.9%. And a penalty kill percentage, I think that was at 79, was it not? Yeah, so we might have to take a look at our PK. But aside from that, 9-1 and one entering the playoffs, I can't wait for us to get swept. And in the AHL as well, the Burnaby Aces... Second best team in the league behind the Tucson Roadrunners, who were ungodly good. Oh my god. So we'll see what Burnaby can do. I mean, they have been a consistently good team throughout this series. As Ekman, Bayer, and Niedermeyer all hit 83 points, 58 goals for Matthias Ekman. Two straight 50 goal seasons now. Where you look, I mean, we saw some goal scoring potential and then the steroids kicked in. <laughs> he has back-to-back -back 50 goal seasons. It's beautiful. Joey Byer hit 500 goals this season. He'll hit 900 uh, career games and points next season. He's still a career minus 36 because of the early seasons. But goddamn. Oh, captain, my captain has never scored less than 30 goals in a season. Absolutely crazy. 
absolutely crazy. And then Andrew Niedermeyer to hit 28 goals, 83 points is great. He had 92 last year. And again, this is a guy, first round pick. Absolute beauty. Carlton on 76 points. Oberg on 70. I mean, Oberg's 31 at this point. Only 820 games, but someone else who has really stuck around. Geisberger hit 50. Uh, Legacy, again, two goals, 47 assists. We call that the reverse Brandon Peary. Borabev with 21 goals. Janik did well. Boyce did pretty well. Again, he just wasn't exactly ready for prime time. But, I mean, five 20-goal scores, 140, and a 58. Defensively. Uh, not the highest scoring totals in the world, but 30 points for Johnson. Zagrappen put up 26 as a rookie, which is pretty nice. Abdicator with two points as an enforcer defenseman. Sergachev, well done, by the way. I look forward to reading those every day. <laughs> Winkler put up a 918. You have to wonder if we had kept Copeland. You know, if we had kept Copeland, what would have happened? You know, if we kept Copeland and we kept Zigamanis. How good would our goaltending have been? But I wasn't planning on making the changes to low scoring, high shot total. Maybe it would have been even better. We'll never know. That's just one of those X factors, so. Around the league. Yeah, a couple hundred point guys. 62 goals for Tristan Love. So again, Love, Gerber, Carpenter, all power forwards that could have been ours. And it's ridiculous that we didn't end up with a single one of these guys. All three of them scored 62 goals. For some reason, man, power forwards are broken. And in terms of assists, no stupidly crazy numbers. Like, oh, two goals, 111 assists this season, at least. Uh, for the defenseman, the Cavalier in Boston with 68. Ty Smith still kicking at 34. Goal scoring king, Adam Bogfist and Oscar Nilsson in Montreal. For the goaltenders. Alright, that's that's more like it. A 925 is likely to win the Vesna. That's more like it. I think I like where we have the scoring right now. I think I like where we have it here. We see some high scoring totals, but we also see some good save percentages. You could argue on average maybe a little bit too high. But... I mean, you do have some guys that started a good amount of games that had pretty shit save percentages. And, uh, yeah, shout out to Copeland, who had that 923 in San Jose. Direct competition! We, uh, again, he went to, uh, he went to Tampa and then signed with San Jose and does that. What an asshole. Where's Zigamanis? He went to Detroit and had an 891. For the rookies, Scott Strong, Claremont, Olsen. We didn't have anybody up there for Rookie of the Year, unfortunately. Janik did pretty well. Not too bad. Not too bad. I had a boat for somewhere, somehow. ADB just bust night. Probably. Probably. <sighs> I can't believe I get to say this, guys. For the first time. This goon squad has made the postseason. We will be playing the Calgary Flames. You have Nashville, Colorado, Vancouver, Chicago, Edmonton, and San Jose. I do not have offsides off. That is on. Uh, that's something that I could further edit in terms of... Again, I, I want to make sure there are good save percentages, but good uh, scoring numbers too. From there, I could turn offsides and icing off just to see if that can bump up the high-end offense a little bit more while keeping good save percentages. I might do that. But, yeah, no, we have offsides on currently. Hello, Crease Police. My favorite goaltender. That's right, I said it. It's the Islanders, Blue Jackets, Rangers, Habs, Panthers, Bruins, Sabres. And penguins. Guys, we made the playoffs for the first time. Let us take a look at the Calgary Flames because I'm quite sure, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, and ain't is a word in this instance, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
we're going to leave this team exactly as it is and hope for the best. What do the Calgary Flames look like is the question. What are we up against? Aha. Uh -huh. All right. A 36-year-old Matthew Kachuk, 91 overall Steve Turner, and a 34-year-old Robert Thomas. Second line of potential Rookie of the Year candidate Scott Strong with Josh Waugh and Terry Noonan. Third line, Carson Lyon, Luke Cunnan, and a 35-year-old Patrick Laine. You get a look at his career point in total, which is absolutely nuts. This is team making progress. Chris, we just made the playoffs for the first time. And on the fourth line, Nick Erickson, Brendan Champion, and Yuri Grigorenko. The defense. Uh, Matt Zenroth, who was a 90. Uh-huh. With Caden Pyatt. Ladislav Vanek with 35-year-old Cal Foot, and William Wallander with Henrik Dockel. The goaltender, 82 overall Vyacheslav Yaskin. Ryan Duffy is behind him. That's a pretty good team. Ivan Chikovic, Ridley Gregg, and Sean, God, Shergel, I guess it is. Shregel, I don't know. That is not the team that I think we wanted to see here. Don't think it is. Oh, we have a plus five on that particular PK. Wanted to see if there was a way to keep it. We're just gonna leave it. All right, this is, uh, this is gonna be interesting. This is going to be very, very interesting. Two very, very good teams going head to head. I will reiterate for the 15th time we make the playoffs for the first time. 88, 89, 84 against 94, 89 and I didn't catch the goaltending in 81. <sighs> this is gonna be a tough one. This is gonna be tough. Boys, you have shown the heart, the soul, most importantly, the grit. And as was quoted last night, this team is all heart and nuts. And hopefully, just hopefully, as Cameron Carlton's apparently a leader in this locker room, you love to see it. Hopefully, just hopefully, we can pull this off. It is game one, the first playoff game in franchise history. It's a home game. Don't get Winnipegged. Again, Jets fans, I'm sorry, but don't get Winnipegged, please. First period, and it's a goal apiece. Strong for them, Mendez for us. 14 shots to nine in their favor. Second period, Calgary has the lead. Robert Thomas, 11-11, make a wish. I wish we'd score more goals. We go to the third period. Come on, boys. Come on. Down three to one. Time to show off some of that heart. Time to show off some of that heart, some of that grit, truculence, tugness. No. No. First ever home playoff game. First ever playoff game in general, and we lose it. Three to one. The offense cannot overcome an 82 overall goaltender more than once. At least you made the playoffs. God, if that's the way we get to look at this. No changes. Game two. Can we get the win here? First period, much better start. Two goals on the power play for Janik. Just about a minute apart. That is much, much better. We have to use our top-notch power play to our advantage, and we did there. Second period, let's fucking go. Cameron Carlton makes it three. We go to the third period with a three-goal lead. What's the worst that could happen? 
All right, make it 3-1, and Niedermeyer, thank God, makes it 4-1. A Leafs fan's favorite scoreline power play chance goes to waste. But I think we're looking good. And for the first time in franchise history, it took until 2034. <laughs> we have made history. It is a playoff win. We shall not get Winnipeg today. Fantastic. Great performance from Janik Winkler and Niedermeyer leading the way. This series is tied at one apiece. Who knows how the rest of the series is going to go. If we don't have a home team winning or a home team losing trend, a 1-1 split is pretty rare, in, at least my experiences in the playoffs here. AHL team, by the way, up 2-1 on the Baby Sens. It is game three. As the series shifts to Calgary, no reason to make any line changes yet. Here we go. First period. That is a horrible start. Power play goal for Turner. Noonan adds another one. Shots were close. The score is not. We are down two to nothing. Second period. That helps. Geisberg is shorthanded. Ekman as well. We tied it. But Luke Cunning gets the goal back. Down by one. Heading into the third. It is time to show off that heart, that grit, that determination. Maybe, just maybe, please. Holy power play time for Calgary, by the way. Halfway through the third, can we get the tying goal? Please, maybe, possibly, Joe Byer, the captain. Come on. Are we going to overtime? Yes, we are. Joey Byer. <sighs> it's the first ever overtime in team history. I have to watch it. I have to watch it. This could last six and a half years. I have to watch it. We have to see what this team can do. Yes, we're going to put them in the reverse retro. Why would we not? We got to watch it. Joey Byer tied it. The question now is can we win it? Can we win it? I certainly hope so. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Here in Calgary, game three, first round. Let's see what we can do. Oh, come on, boys. Quick passes here in front. Big save early. We almost won it eight seconds into the game. Second chance scores. Let's go. Don't doubt the goons in overtime, baby. Oh, my God. In record time. Let's go, man. And a 2-1 to one series lead. Look at the grit forcing the turnover. And it's Niedermeyer with the winner. Oh, my God. Cameron Carlton with the grit in the corner. Gets it to Niedermeyer, and that's it. Just seconds into the overtime. 4-3 is your final. Joey Byer ties it up in the closing moments of the game. I mean, look at this. Eki to playmaker, pretty much. Face off one to Ebbett. Quick pass over to Carlson. Drops it off to Niedermeyer, who nearly, nearly hit Ebbett again on the pinch for the winner. Ebbett threw it back off the side of the net. They recovered. Tried to get it out, but look at the heart. Look at the nuts on Cameron Carlson. Look at that four-checking pressure. That is Calgary's top player. You can't miss him. He's got those stupid green laces. Get that shit out of here. Get that shit out of here, Tina Turner. And then look at this feed. Look at... Hold on. What you really got to talk about here. Look at Niedermeyer. Look at Niedermeyer. Watching the play. He just knows. I'm going to sneak in. Bang. Tap in. Game over. 2-1 to the goons. 2-1 to the good. <sighs> what a beautiful situation we find ourselves in, chat. What a beautiful situation that we find ourselves in. Back-to-back -back wins and a 2-1 to series lead. Holy hell. Do you believe in miracles, chat? Do you? Do you believe in miracles, chat? 
Winkler with a 9.23. Joey Byer, a top line, saving the day. We go to game four. After scoring four goals in the last two games, we could easily be knocked right back down onto our ass here, but hey, let's see what we can do. Game four here in Calgary, a chance to take a commanding three to one series lead in our first ever playoff series. First period, one goal apiece. Niedermeyer on the power play offsets the opening goal from Mr. Brendan Champion. 14 shots to nine is not bad. Second period, let's go. Ekman and the rookie Talixson. We're up three to one. Come on, boys. Come on. <sighs> Imagine we Florida Marlins slash Miami Marlins this. Janik scores. Kachuk gets it back. Imagine we Marlins this. We will soar. We are fish after all. Imagine that we Marlins this. And it's just, hey, if you make the playoffs, you win the cup. That's right. I'm talking cup already. Visualize it. Want it. Balls. As we give up three unanswered goals, we're going to overtime. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, might have gotten ahead of myself just a little bit. Uh-huh. Well, what's the worst that could happen by, uh... What's the worst that could happen by watching this again, huh? <laughs> what's the worst? What's the worst that could happen? Oh man, we uh, we blew it. We potentially blew it here. Six on fire at the end. Yeah, well, you know. All right, chat. Well, it's game four. It's overtime. I mean, we did pretty well in overtime last time. Uh, not not so great here heading into the overtime. All right, boys, come on. Oh, God. Matthew Kachuk looking for his hat trick. <laughs> he almost got it. Winkler, if you win this game, we get you a new helmet, buddy. They are on the power play to start here. If Winkler wins this series, we give him a bucket. That's how it works. Get out of here, Turner. Nobody likes you. You don't say... Well, that's how you blow a lead in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. What is up with these quick winners in overtime? Jesus. And this series is now tied at two games apiece. That, um, yeah, it was, uh, <clears throat> oh, boy. All right. That, um, all right. <clears throat> that, uh, that's not great, is it? Well, it's a best of three from here on out, right? <clears throat> it's a best of three. Anything can happen. We've we've kept it close. We did just piss away a great chance at a uh, at a nice little, you know, at a nice little three to one series lead. We're honestly just gonna leave it the same, man. It's what got us here. <clears throat> it's what got us here. It's game five, back on home ice. A 2-2 split. Each team has won at home and lost at home. First period, damn good start. Boyce and Ekman. Very, very good. You notice how I'm not getting too overconfident now. <laughs> Second period, Calgary gets one back. It's Noonan on the power play. Do I think the minus one is hurting us? Maybe, but it hadn't really hurt us all season long. We go to the third, up by one here in game five. A two-to-two two series split so far in our first ever playoff 
appearance. Carlton makes it three. Kachuk scores in the third. I'm shitting my pants. Power play for Calgary goes to waste. Carlton scores again. I wish your parents named you Cameron with a C, because double C. Captain Charisma leading the way because he's all heart and all nuts. We have a 3-2 series lead here in the first round against a very, very good Calgary team. Winkler, Carlton, getting it done. Carlton offsets Kachuk. We are one win away from the second round as the AHL team moves on after beating Belleville in five. San Jose and Edmonton are going to seven. Chicago and Vancouver are going to seven. Colorado's already moved on. Every Eastern Conference matchup is already done with Boston, CBJ, Montreal, and Pittsburgh moving on. It's game six, back in Calgary. Can we end this? Can we get the job done? First period, good start, Niedermeyer. Leading scorer in this series. Very good. Second period. That's not great. Two goals from Patrick Line. Uh huh. <sighs> Come on, boys. It's not done. Third period. End it now. Do it. Do it. Power play chances for both sides. No goals. If there's a next goal, it's very important. Marcus Oberg, come on. Power play for Calgary. Killed off. Five, four, three, two, a one. Overtime? Overtime! <laughs> Who would have thought it's overtime against Calgary? Marcus Oberg sends us to our third overtime of this series. We have one win. They have one win. Both scored within the first 30 seconds of the overtime let's do it what's the worst that could happen put him in the reverse retro again oh god <laughs> this is as big of a toss-up as you possibly get all three overtimes in calgary by the way all three in all three in calgary oh god whoever gets the first rush gets the chance to win it here's ebbett Ebbett looking. Carlton to the point. Traffic in front. Scramble to get it out. Matthew Kachuk dishes it over. Good recovery defense there. Joey Byer, the captain, having trouble. Ebbett's able to hold on to it. Byer again. Space. Joey Byer brings it over the line. Windmill. Byer looking. Byer just roofed it high short side. That was a hell of a chance. Good pressure here on the four check. Byer with a monster hit. Couldn't get the puck. They tried to split the D. Matthew Kachuk has it. Looking. Sauce's backhand stopped by Winkler. Ooh. All right. Let's get the second lines out there, boys. Come on. Ekman, Oberg, and Legacy. Strong. Can't get the shot off. Loose puck. Winkler covers. Oh, God. I can't wait to rip the tongue off of that freaking mascot. It's been done before. It'll be done again. How big is Bayer? To be honest, I'm not sure. He's a big ass boy, though. Noonan. No! God, no. Game seven on the horizon. Game seven coming up. A broken play. Oh boy. Oh boy. We go back to Trinidad. Game seven coming up. I mean, it's just a broken play. Like, watch this bounce, dude. Like, come on. Number one, he has it on the backhand. 
And then whether or not he was trying a pass or a contextual shot, nothing about that play makes sense where it's like, hey, I'm just gonna warp over here and then cause stick or skate contact. That's just one of those EA goals, man. And then right here, not to mention this type of shot. Oh, so see, okay. Here's why I don't play this game often and why I play 2K10. You can't tell me it's any worse than it used to be in 2K10. Watch this from Noonan. Again, pass or shot, drags through, hits a skate, still just perfectly bounces because there's contextual fucking hit or whatever. But then right here, no incidental contact off his own teammate's blade. He still holds on to it. And then right here, he shoots it through his fucking skate. Like, I mean, this is one of those plays, and somebody, please, in about 30 seconds when I'm done ranting, please clip this. Like, the, I'm telling you, the inconsistencies, I and mean, if we lose this playoff series, sure, whatever. It's the inconsistencies with this gameplay as to why I don't think incidental contact should be in this game. Because it's not there yet. They haven't figured it out. It's not good enough. It's just not. And obviously a goal like this, like obviously people get pissed at this game. Again, you, you say there's incidental contact there, but there's none there. And then he shoots it through a guy's skate. And then, yeah, apparently he got enough of a wrist flick to essentially redirect that in midair. And it's just, it's not good enough. That's why I often don't play this game. And when I do, like I said, I, I'll play threes with Terrio. I'll score literally about 20 goals in three games. And then I'll go to NHL 2K10 and play one game and have way more fun. And it's because of stuff like this. Even if it's in your favor, you're just like, oh, well, that's fucking stupid, but at least it was in my favor. Like, you know. I knew that was the risk when I loaded in to watch the gameplay, but obviously it makes franchise mode a bit more dramatic to watch the gameplay. If we lose this series now, it's going to suck. But yeah, that's just one of those things, man, where... Uh, there's a reason why I tend to focus on franchise mode. Which obviously, I mean, you could sit here and say, well, you know, hey, you jumped into the gameplay and you dipped out of franchise mode, technically. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. So if, yeah, whoever was going to clip all of that, you could clip it now. I've, I've stopped. Thank you. Uh, Jacob, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> Davos, indeed, it was. Game 7 is on the horizon. Joe Byer has one goal. He needs to wake the hell up. He needs to wake the hell up. So does Dmitry Vorobev. We have some dudes that are just not getting it done right now. We are going to leave the lines the same. It's just up to them to get it done. The third pairing hasn't been a detriment. The goaltending needs to be better as well. It just comes down to whether or not we're good enough and whether or not our stars show up. Game 7 on home ice against Calgary. Can we win our first ever playoff series? Here we go. First period. Two power play goals for Noonan. Presumably on the same advantage. 20 shots to 6 for Calgary. Uh-huh. Second period. Noonan with the hat trick. 33 shots to 17. 3 to nothing, Calgary. We go to the third. Is our season done in part due to a goal where the puck was shot through a skate? We cannot stay out of the box. Carlton gets a power play goal. It's 3-1. to one. Just enough to give us hope, but is it too little too late? Yes, it is. Vanek makes it 4-1. The Calgary Flames are going to survive in Game 7 and knock out the Goons. 49 shots in a Game 7. From the flames. Fucking hell. 
That was about the worst thing that could have happened. Our offense just completely no-showed. Calgary wins it in seven. <clears throat> we were in the driver's seat in that series, and uh, we pissed it away. No other way to uh, put it. We pissed it away. Winkler was solid, but not good enough. <clears throat> no points from Ebbett. One point from Johnson. Bottom line is, for the most part, our defense just didn't produce offensively. Joe Byer let us down. It was his first chance at postseason success, and honestly, I mean, the lack of goals hurt a lot. Carlton and Niedermeyer were great. Ekman was pretty great. Oberg was pretty great. There was a lack of secondary scoring, though. Vorobev, Boyce kind of struggled. <clears throat> That's a tough loss. That's a really tough loss. And to be honest, I, I wish I didn't watch the gameplay because you have to wonder then if I didn't watch any of the overtimes, how would that series have gone? We don't know the answer to that. But what we do know is that in game six, uh, a man shot it through another man's fucking foot. And we lost because of it. So it's, um, it's interesting to sit here then. It's interesting to sit here and to be able to say that even in franchise mode, I can't escape getting EA'd on the ice. 